Battle of the English Isles. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Today, something I promised to do a long time ago and never got around to it, but I'm finally doing it today. Comparing these two. Now, these two beers are fantastic. One from the People's Republic of Yorkshire and one from Hillbilly Central that is known as Kent. And I love these beers. They're both 10 out of 10 beers for me. And I think Shepherd Neem are one of them breweries that everything they produce is pretty darn good under their under their own name. Now, they do other beers as well um, under different brands. So it's a little bit complicated, but they've got something called the, the Faversham Beer Range, which is, um, they call it Whitstable Bay. And it's, uh, it's supposedly brewed in, in the um, Faversham Brewery. It's all one thing. There is no Faversham Brewery. It's just all Shepherd Name. Well, it, I suppose there is, technically. They call it Faversham Brewery. If you look at my, I went down on the bike to, um, during the lockdown, this was, to the Shepherd Name Brewery. And uh, you can see the, uh, the name above the brewery. It says Faversham Brewery. So the two are interchangeable, but it is all Shepherd Name. Now, these, the, as I say, these are great beers and they are similar in style, i.e. they are dark, strong beers. Now, the ABVs do differ slightly, but they are a little bit on the hefty side. The Old Peculiar being 5.6 and the Shepherd Neem being 6.5. Quite easy to remember, you just reverse them. Now, I have reviewed both beers on the channel and they have got quite good reviews, but there are differences. Obviously, the ABV is different, the style is the same, but this is bottle conditioned, the 1698 is bottle conditioned, and the Old Peculiar is pasteurised and cold filtered, the exact opposite of bottle conditioning. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to know about these beers. They contain adjuncts, and I'll get into the ingredients in the next section, but it, uh, adjuncts are a typical ingredient of English ales, good English ales. And what do I mean by adjuncts? Well, basically there isn't hops, malt or barley, etc. So we're looking at things like wheat. Uh, we're looking at any type of sugar. I'll get onto that in the next section as well. Um, licorice, that type of thing, star anise, you know, whatever, whatever brewers put into their beer that isn't basically doesn't fall into what the Germans call the Reinheitsgebot, you know, the four basic ingredients of beer. But there are other things as well that can be classed as adjuncts. Um, it's quite a, a, a complicated um, subject on adjuncts, and I should, I should get into them really and do a, a video on there because there are some interesting ingredients, certainly in English beer. The Belgians do it as well, so maybe there's a, an idea for a video. Who knows? If you want to see that, put it in the comment section and I'll get around to doing that. But um, I'm not, in this video, <laughs> now I do remember I, I compared the Fuller's Vintage Ale with the Bateman's Vintage Ale. That video took an hour. I am not gonna take an hour to compare these two. So I'm not doing the history of these two breweries. Needless to say, Shepherd Neem is the oldest known brewer in the United Kingdom and they date from 1698. This beer was to celebrate their tercentenary, which is 300 years, so this was first brewed in 1998. It was a one-off and it became so popular that they decided to carry on brewing it. This um, has been brewed since I was a kid. I do remember Old Peculiar was one of them beers that, if, if you mentioned like real ale or anything like that, Old Peculiar was usually the first one that people thought of. It, it, it was basically a rebellion against uh, the kegged beer or the kegged what they called it ale, the keg ale at the time, and hence camera, that's where camera came about, a rebellion against that. But this was um, one of the beers that was always 
quoted when people were talking about real ale, like Old Peculiar. Um, I think the other one was Bishop's Finger as well, which is another great beer from this lot. So these two breweries do have some pedigree. I like both their beers. I like what they do, these breweries. So I think it's a wor that they're worthy contenders to be compared with. As I say, the styles are pretty similar. English Strong Ale. This has got Kentish Strong Ale on it, which I think Shepherd Neem are the only ones that do a Kentish Strong Ale. But it has got geographical protected status on it. If you look at the back, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a little sneaky peek here. This should really be doing this in the next section, but my channel, my fucking rules. But there, look, you've got a geographical protected status. So I don't know of any other strong Kentish ales. I imagine if another brewer from Kent did a strong ale and called it a Kentish strong ale, I don't know what whether Shepherd Neem could have a, a leg to stand on that. But I digress. So say, I'm not going to do the history of the breweries. I'm just going to try and get into the beer so I'm not keeping you too long. Let's investigate the beers. Right, let's go for uh, Old Peculiar first. Right, Old Peculiar. It is 5.6%, it is a 500ml bottle. It is from the People's Republic of Yorkshire. And it's, it does have a brew sheet on here. Um, I'm not sure what the hops, uh, the malt is that's used in this. I imagine there's a pale malt of some description and there's roasted malts as well to give it that nice dark color that it's got. But the hops are quite interesting and there's a very good selection of English style hops. They've got Fuggles in there. Now Fuggles hops, they're in every good English beer. And I do find that the Fuggles hops that you get in these English beers have a distinct flavor. It's usually where these, these English type beers get their earthiness from. If you get that earthy, musty style flavour in an English beer, you can guarantee more or less every time that it's Fuggles. Now you can substitute Fuggles for certain other hops, but Fuggles in the UK, I don't know why you would substitute Fuggles hops for any other hops if you were in the UK. Maybe if you were abroad or in Europe and you were trying to brew an English style ale. I know the Americans brew a lot of English style ales, they may use something different, there are substitutes. But it does contain Fuggles. It also contains Challenger hops as well. Now Challenger hops are usually found in bitters. They are renowned for their spice and that's what gives bitters, if they use Challenger hops, that's what they're used for, to give it the black pepper bitterness that you get on these type of beers. And it's got it in there. And you've also got a hop called Target hops, which again are English hops, and they are renowned for their, they have like a sage, type flavour to them. So if you can imagine stuffing, you know, your sage and onion type topping, forget about the onions, just think of the sage. It's a herb, basically. So they, they have herbal notes. And there's also a certain amount of spice on there as well. Again, similar to the to the Challenger hop, you do get a little bit of that black pepper spice. But it's also got a little bit of dried citrus in there too. Now, usually that's orange, but it has been known to have other slightly citrusy flavors on there, you know, like um, orange zest, which is like a more of a bitter type orange. But you could also put that down to some of the yeasty esters as well, because you tend to find that certain yeasts or certain strains of yeast do have that um, zesty type of flavor, or do give beer that zesty type of flavor. From memory, you don't really get much of the hop, hop character in Old Peculiar. This is more of a more of a malt forward beer in the old ale style, if you know what I mean. Now it does say on here to drink this cool. So that's what I'm doing. This is cool. It's not it's not chilled, it's it's come out of the fridge, but it's been stood for a while. So that is I'd say that's cold cellar temperature. If you, it's, it's January now, so if you can imagine a cold pub cellar in say January or something, then it's about that temperature. Right, let's get on to the shepherd name. Now Exact opposite to that, well, not exact opposite to that, but um, this is not pasteurized, this is not cold filtered, this is bottle conditioned, this will contain uh, yeast sediment in there. You can you can leave this and even past its sell by date and it will still be good to drink in the bottle. As I say, it's got sediment in there, which is gonna give it um, a bit more carbonation than the old Peculiar. And it's a strong beer. It's 6.5%. Uh, now, you may say that's not too strong, but you're sort of bordering on the non-sessioning beer. Well, I don't think you can session a 5.6 beer, especially not this type. This is very, very flavor intense. 
However, there's no brew sheet on there, so I can't tell you what the um, what the hops are in here, but they do make a point of saying they're locally grown hops. Now, if they'd use any other hops, I would have a serious fucking problem with that because Kent is renowned for its hops. Sadly, that's on the decline at the moment, which is a real shame. And it's it's just testament to to the way things are going in this country with beer. You know, years ago, I've gone into this before, but Kent was a, I wouldn't say a holiday destination, but it was somewhere that the working people of London could go to earn a little bit of money during the uh, the summer shutdowns. What I mean by summer shutdowns were um, the factories would shut down for two weeks. They would do, you know, if they were using um, production machines, they would, and I've worked in factories as well, and this is what they did. They had a two week shutdown. Everybody would have to book their holidays for that and all the maintenance was carried out on the building and on the machines, which they couldn't do during the year because obviously they were working on their machines. And uh, yeah, I, I worked in a factory there where we had a two week shutdown. It's very fucking annoying actually because all your, your, hol your summer holidays are, are planned out for you. But back in the 50s and maybe into the 60s as well, uh, the, the working men and women from London would get aboard trains and they would go hot picking and I mean, they had two weeks holiday and they'd be grafting and the work would be hard. Your hands would be cut to ribbons cupping, picking hops. It's one of them real labor intense jobs that can't be done by a machine as far as I know. It, they may have automated it in Germany, but certainly back in the 50s and 60s, it was all done by hand and people would get seasonal work to earn a bit of extra cash. And it would be a, a holiday for the kids as well. And yeah, simpler times. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah, there's no brew sheet in this, but there is one alarm bell. And that alarm bell is they use glucose syrup in this. Now, you can call it brewing syrup, glucose syrup. Um, I would have liked to have seen invert sugar. I think invert sugar gives it a nice flavor, but you know, that's, that's their choice. That's what they've done. So that contains invert sugar as well. I think it is relatively sweet. So I'm assuming that that's going to be invert sugar. Let's finally get this open, and see, or these two open, and see what's going on, find out which is what I think is the best one. Right, I will use my posh cap lifter if it wants to play ball. Is it? No, it fucking hasn't. Oh, you twat. Uh, there you go. A little bit of percussive maintenance works wonders. Right. There is the cap off the old Peculiar. I'm sure you've seen this before in the other video, but that is the seal from the Peculiar of Massam. Uh, a Peculiar is, a, is basically a church that wasn't tied to a, a diocese and it was called a Peculiar for whatever reason, but Massam was uh, a Peculiar. It's a religious term. There's 1698, you get the, oh, there you go. And Shepherd Neem caps come off very easily indeed. There is the cap for that. If you're interested in caps, there you go. Right, let's get them into the glass. So, London, I'm gonna use a London Pride glass for that because London's nearer Kent. This is my fucked up um, theory. So that's why I'm using it. Get a little bit in there. Now, if you notice in the last few videos, I've only been pouring a little bit into the glass. I do find that you get a little bit more aroma if you pour a little bit into the glass rather than the whole lot. So that's why I'm doing that in case you were wondering. Right, let's dive into the Old Peculiar because I've got that in my hand. There is the Old Peculiar in the glass. It's very dark, but that is a ruby color. It almost looks like a Guinness, but it's not. That is ruby colored um, on the nose. Yeah, it's lovely. This is this is what I, I know of Old Peculiar. And I'm not, I'm not gonna try and fucking be, pretend I'm surprised, but I'm sure many of you have drunk Old Peculiar before, but you know if you you have a, a bit of a snifter, you'll get roasted malt on there, you'll get a sweetness to it as well, hence why I think that's got the invert sugar on it. But it's nice, it's malty sweetness. It's like a, a chocolate malt coupled with a roasted malt, slight spiciness on there, little touch of what I perceive to be coffee, but it's nice. Aromas aren't big, but they are there. Nice. Right, now the 1698. 
Now that has got a fair amount of fizz. And as you can see, it is lighter. That is a copper color. Not unusual for English strong ale. On the nose. Yeah, see this is, this is typical of Shepherd Neem. I get this aroma from all their beers and it's very, very earthy and spicy. And that's the hops, the Kent hops that they're using. In, they use them in all their beers. If you, you get a very similar aroma from Spitfire, you get a similar aroma from Master Brew, etc. Now, some people claim that you get a metallic taste from Shepherd Name. I've never, I've never really got that. What I have got is um, this, this kind of flavour, this, this hoppy, this very like hedgerowy, earthy, musty type flavour, which some people may perceive to be metallic. I don't. That's coming from the hops. It's very earthy, very musty, and quite spicy as well. Nice. But, um, some, of, some people say it's like putting a, a two pence piece in your mouth. Uh, I've never got that, to be honest. There is a certain unique flavour that you get from Shepherd Neem beer. And a uh, subscriber um, pointed out recently that um, it could be down to the Kent water, which is a very good point indeed because it's filtered through chalk and it's very chalky in the southeast of England. You only have to look at the White Cliffs of Dover. That's what you get. You'll get clay, but as soon as you go down a little bit further, you hit chalk and chalk is hard and it's dusty as well. And you do find some of that. I mean, they get most of it out of the water, but you can, you can pick up what they, what they call seasoning in the water. And it does give the beer a unique flavour. And that's nice. This, again, smells sweet, but it's, it has got that earthiness and that mustiness to it, which is nice. Right, I've given you the aroma profile. Let's go for the flavour. <music> Going to go for the Old Peculiar first. Good elf. Very nice. Reasonably full bodied. The sweetness is there again, and that's quite big. There's, there's a roasted element to it, roasted malt element to it, but I'm sure if, if you've tasted it before, you will get that sweetness that's on there. It's very, very drinkable. The sweetness isn't overpowering, it's not cloying, it's not like a, a Belgian beer, or not like that fucking Porter from Germany, the Sturtebecker that I tried the other day, Jesus Christ. It's like they tipped a whole load of fucking Titan Lyle in there. That's smooth and balanced. Not much hop character in there at all. It's mainly sweet, malty and roasted notes that are on there. Maybe a little slight bitterness from them roasted malts, but it's it's very rounded, very, I would say, smoothed and quite balanced and full-bodied. Right, let's get on to 1698. Right, this has got a bit more of a, a robust flavour to it. Again, there's a sweetness to it. <clears throat> there is what I have to perceive, almost. Now, you know my views on wine, but there's almost like a wine, red wine, you know, maybe even a fortified wine, like a sherry style note to it that comes through on the first mouthful. Um, the, the glucose syrup they're talking about, not really noticeable. Not on that first mouthful anyway. There's a little bit more hop character in this. There's a touch of that earthiness to them, to it. But it it is a little bit more, how can I put this? I wouldn't say trickly, a little, little bit more cloying than the old peculiar. And when I say cloying, I mean, you do get that sweetness and it does, it's not sickly, but it's, it's just about right in my opinion. And it does give it a unique style of flavor to it. A 
nice spicy finish on there as well. I'd love to know what hops they're using, but there is a nice bit of that black, black pepper spice that you get on good English ales. Um, as it stands, I'm earing towards the shepherd neem for flavour. Let me dive back again into the old peculiar. That's the least offensive one out there. So when I say least offensive, I mean, you don't have the bold flavors that you've got on the 1698. It's, it's very well rounded, quite, quite drinkable actually. And it's a beer that I have, as I say, I've tried in the past. I've had it on cask as well. And it's really nice. Very, very drinkable, I have to say. And this, again, is testament to Theakston's. They're a good brewer. I do like what they do. Yeah, it's less cloying, more rounded. Goes down really nicely. Very, very faint trace of roasted malt bitterness on the finish. And I imagine if there was any more of that, that sort of balanced out by the by the invert sugar that they've put in there. Um, some people say they get a licorice style flavor from Old Peculiar. I don't really see that. I don't really get that, to be honest. But I suppose with that sugar, there is an element of sort of dark fruit, like a raisin and sort of like a, a dark, I say dark, a, a black cherry. I'm trying to think of trying to think of the fruit there, but yeah, th th you do get a tiny element of that, but it's not big. I will say that it's it's very rounded, very malty. It's got more of a malt character than a hop character. Right, I'm going to dive into the 1698 again. Yeah, there's, there's more of a, what I would consider a bolder hop character. Fair amount of spice on there too as well. Uh, the, the malts that you get on there, there's a, an element of caramel, but it's more toffee malt on this, to be honest. And the finish is quite chewy, so you do get quite a long lasting finish. And that is just a cross between sort of light elements of caramel and toffee malt coupled with that earthiness um out of the two i would say this has got m more character i think you know for the the archetypal english ale you would be looking at something like 1698 in my opinion but that's not to take anything away from the old peculiar because the old peculiar does things that 1698 does not i.e it's it's easier drinking in my opinion when i say easier drinking what do i mean by that well you haven't got these huge flavors that you have to sit and savor the the old peculiar is a bit more you know i wouldn't say get it down your neck but you can drink it and not have to concentrate on what kind well some people just don't do they they just they just drink don't they which is fine you know i have no problem with people doing that as long as they're drinking good beer i i just yeah, well, I'm not going to even mention fucking macro brewers with these two two beers on on the table here in front of me. And as this warms up even more, you get more of the the bitterness coming through. There's even a little element of ethanol on this, not big, but it is there. I am getting it. And I didn't really get that. Now this is warming up slightly, and of course it's going to be a little bit warmer when it's in the glass. I'm going to go back to the old peculiar now. Yeah, this is um, this is just a lot smoother. It's a lot more. Oh, how could I put this? 
just a lot more rounded. It has got more of a malt character than the, the Shepherd name. That's what I think distinguishes the two. The Theakstons, you've got your roasted malt and you've got a certain amount of toffee malt on there as well. And that's really the main characteristic of this beer. Yes, they've got three different types of hops in there. Um, they really don't make themselves known that much. This is all about the malt in the true old ale style. That is what old ale was about. It was about the malty flavors. But it's nice, nicely drinkable, well-rounded. Absolutely no complaints about that whatsoever. The shepherd name, now this is just fucking boisterous, a boisterous English ale. Mm. There's even more of that orange zest and the, um, as I say, there's like a sherry element to it. And I'm wondering whether, I know the little Welsh fella says, oh, he doesn't drink shepherd name beer anymore because it's, it's like putting a 2p coin in your mouth. I don't think that's copper that they're getting. I think what that is, it's like a, it's like a sherry type flavour. Now, you, I've said it on a few times on the show. My mum used to drink, we well, went for a phase of drinking sherry, and I used to nick little bits of. Uh, she used to drink Ember Cream. Do you remember that stuff? Fucking hell! I remember waking up one morning and there was about four bottles in the fucking bin, and uh, <laughs> I had a couple of mates around. And I remember one of my mates sat down and he said, "Fucking hell, what's this? Breakfast?" <laughs> but um. Yeah, I do recall, I wouldn't drink uh, sherry now. My auntie lived with us for a while. She used to drink that sherry and all. So I, I was always, as a kid, I was always around it. I grew up with alcohol. Do you know what I mean? My parents were drinkers. And I say that in the nicest possible way. They weren't horrible. They liked to drink, just like, you know, any working man or woman does. And uh, sherry was my mum's drink for a while. And then she went under the whiskey. And uh, the, the Ember Cream that she used to drink. Obviously, sherry is a fortified wine. And uh, the other one, Harvey's Bristol Cream, she used to drink as well. I don't know if you, even know if you can get these or not now. Fucking, I, I just see it all as wine. But sherry is a fortified wine. When, and when they call it a fortified wine, it's uh, it's quite intense. It's, it's an intensely flavored wine. And uh, that's kind of what I'm getting on here. coupled with the bitter spiciness of them hops. It's not copper, and I think that's where they're getting confused, some of these um, beer reviews. And I'm not knocking them, I mean, it's their perception, but it's not copper. It's I would say that's a cross between the Kent hops that you get from Shepherd Name and the yeast, certainly. there's. I think that's where the the, the wine esters are coming from, or the wine type esters are coming from, coupled with the sugar as well, or the glucose syrup, I should say, not the sugar. But yeah, um, nice, very difficult to separate because the two beers are what I would consider typical English ales, but they have their place for certain situations. And I think the, the Theakstons, I wouldn't say it's a session beer, not a 5.6, but I would say it's the easier drinking out of the two. But the Shepherd Neem 1698 is just full of character. That's my opinion. So what is the verdict on these two? Well, two fantastic beers. For me, being a huge fan of English ales, they're two 10 out of 10 beers. So. They've, in my opinion, they've won already, the pair of them. They're great beers. Um, you won't go wrong with either. I think if you want a slightly easier drinking beer, then you should go for the Old Peculiar. If you want to try what the, to me, is one of the archetypal tastes of English beer, certainly heavily hopped, Old Ale, I know that's a bit of a contradiction because Old Ale is more about the malt than it is about the hops. But this stuff is pretty darn good. Now, the good thing about this is it's bottle conditioned. So you could leave it and 
with you know you could leave it for up to i would say five years or so and you could try it and it would probably taste a hell of a lot more rounded probably taste a little bit more like the old peculiar but it's uh it's, it's a great beer i love it and uh which one is the winner well i think it's going to be really cruel if i give anybody the the trophy and i'm not going to cop out i will make a decision and you're going to say it's probably biased of me but i will say the shepherd name is the one to go for if you want flavor the old peculiar is the one to go for if you just want rounded flavors that are easily drinkable i prefer getting in my old age i can't drink as much and if i'm going to drink a little amount of beer well i'm not saying a little amount of beer but if i am going to drink a beer i want to have the biggest flavor experience with the shortest amount of beer or the smallest amount of beer i should say should say fucking hell i'm slurring my words now it's six point fucking five percent you know what i mean i've got to fucking i've got to try and keep it together but for me i think the shepherd name's going to win but it's by a, a fucking nats pube because i think just the flavors are more robust on this it's got more of the hop character and I think, and this is what's doing it for me, and you can call me biased because, well, I'm from London, so I live in Kent, but I don't consider myself a Kent native. I live in Kent, but I'm not, I'm not one of the deep south hillbillies from Kent. I'm London born and bred and always will be, but I think this has got more of the regional character than the old peculiar. Or has it, you know, I'm arguing with myself here because Yorkshire is a, quite an agricultural county but i think shepherd neem just just pipped them to the post purely for the the bigger character on the beer but that's not to take anything away from our peculiar that is a fucking legendary beer and it's it's got a place in english brewing history because it's it's available all over the, all over the world so i imagine if you're in in europe in germany or belgium or wherever you can get hold of this if you're in the usa apparently you can get hold of this and i think if you're in australia or new zealand you can get hold of this stuff too i don't know whether it's brewed under license but if uh, if you haven't tried it before i guarantee you you'll not be disappointed with this but for me if you want a true taste of england from the garden of england or as I like to call it, the oil drum in the Garden of England. <laughs> it's worth fucking, that's our estate that is. This is the stuff. So for me, I'm going to give it to 1698. And I don't want you to think I'm biased because I live in the area, but I just think it's got more character. It's got more of a, a regional flavour, if you know what I mean. They're showing off, I mean, I know they both use local ingredients, but Kent being a hop growing county, you've got such so much hop character on that that... Yeah, I think it just pips the old peculiar to the post. But they're two great beers. You won't go wrong either way. They're two 10 out of 10 beers. But for me, today, 16.98 wins the day. And remember, just like these two beers, beer is working class champagne. What the fuck is going on? Hey, what's going on? Oh, you bastard.